Hello and welcome to the Church Militant Shop. My name is Milo Yiannopoulos and I'm here with my co-host Deborah Bourne. How are you doing today Deborah? I'm doing okay, how are you? I'm well, I'm Good. happy because this is the first of our shows and we're beginning today with, well, probably the most important woman in history, wouldn't you say? I think so. She's certainly the most beloved and we've got today uh, three items all in celebration, reverence of course of the Blessed Mother, uh, the Virgin Mary. We're going to start with um, this wonderful statue, which we both own. We fact. do, but in different uh, medium, oh, different colors. That's right. You've got the silver finish, yes, and I've got this bronze finish. Tell us a little bit about the material this is made from, because it's a little bit special, isn't it? It looks like a, it, it's going to weigh a ton and cost a hundred dollars right. to ship. And I want to make sure I have it right. So it's it's a. Um, cold cast and it's hand painted bronze color or you can get it in the pewter sometimes uh one or the other might be on back order but they come in um it's very popular um it i have a shrine at home and i have mine in in my shrine and it looks very very nice um and it, it you know and it's called the adoring virgin and i adore her i actually <laughs> have a rosary hanging from her i do the same thing do you I do the same thing one of the nice things about this particular statue is the shroud. Mm -hmm. And on your silver version, um, something shows up on the back a little bit more than on this one. This is more of a sort of uh, like a, 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 an aged metal finish. On the silver one, you get a little bit more of the detail popping out, I think. But I'm just going to turn this... Because it's a contrast of color. Yeah. Right. I'm going to turn this around and maybe you could explain to us a little bit about the shroud. So the shroud, it, it's got this, um, the stars on it, um, and it just uh, reflects what this is all about. And um, it also has so much depth to it, and any kind of lighting that goes around it, especially candles, just bring the depth depth of this statue out and it like comes alive it's it's just i think magnificent the way it's done the folds mm -hmm. um just the creases and everything's the detail in this is incredible i'm astonished it's called a poly resin um this material mm -hmm. and you can see you know all the beautiful stars that are, are polished a, a slightly different color mm -hmm. i'm a, amazed by the level of detail they managed to get like it was a, a bronze you know like it was made of metal it would cost you know hundred dollars right. to ship it to you if it was bronze right um there's so much beautiful detail in this not just from this lovely feeling of beatitude in her face, right. but also a hallmark, I think, of all of the very finest statues, whether they're marble, metal, whatever, is this incredible illusion of draped fabric. Well, yes, and because you don't just have to, it's not just gorgeous from the front. The whole thing mm -hmm. is just beautiful. It's just so nicely done, and um, I'm very pleased with it. And we've sold a lot of them, and we will continue selling them because it's just um, an icon, icon piece that people really like. So it's 11 and 3 quarter inches tall. If you're right. thinking about how this is going to fit into your uh, shrine or maybe even a bedside table, I know sometimes people like to wake up and say good morning to their favorite yes. uh, you know, people and saints and whatnot. Um, it's available in bronze and pewter and they're both 8750. We don't, we're not yet set up for two easy payments, despite our... Not uh, yet. We're not quite there. <laughs> but we're, we're hoping to offer that one day, or two easy payments. <laughs> but she's she's just under 12 inches tall. She's available in those two different, um, they call them accent finishes. We've got right. statues in, in the shop here that are um, fully painted. Right. And we'll see some of Color. those later. Yes. But the thing I like about this is this, this wonderful burnished, bronzy, aged... Uh, color that she's got and that wonderful the face on this is especially good because the you know this is wonderful it's so peaceful i hope you know you, i hope you know what i mean when i say there are good marys and bad marys of course the real mary there's only there's only good things about her but but there there are some some marys with the faces that unfortunately they haven't put the work in to make sure that she's got right. just the right expression and features right this on the other hand as you can see um at home it's just it's just beautiful you told me something interesting about this um if these are these are sometimes kept by people outside as well as inside. They are, and and um, while they might change their patina a bit by being outside in the elements, um, some people like that. They like that look that mm -hmm. might turn a little um, green. 
the patina like, like might one change. of the big bronzes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I don't know how they do that with. Uh, I don't, <laughs> I don't <laughs> know. I don't know. But it's very, it's very um, substantial, you know, and elegant, and it's got all the qualities of like a wonderful gift, or like I say in the in the shrine um, at your home, it's it's quality. You know, and it and it shows. Yeah, this poly resin stuff, it's really come a long way in the last twenty years since they've 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 been creating statues for people at home that mm -hmm. are not necessarily cast in metals because it's so inconvenient and also can be dangerous when you have kids around. You know, right, you right, can right. do serious injuries to children when you've got big <laughs> hunks of uh, of metal on the table, especially with sharp edges and things. True. This stuff is um if you've ever had one of these resin statues at home. It, it it weighs a lot. I mean, it's it's it it's substantial. And the other thing I like is is these lovely polished details that they're able to produce. So she's got she's got a sort of collar, and then over the veil you've got that lovely edge. It photographs beautifully. Right, and it's almost like the high lows um, just give the depth, you know, of the the dimension to this that that is just beautiful. I think it's wonderful. Um, it's. As I say, I own one of these. I have it on, um, so I've got a, a little bedside table because I like to sort of, I get out of bed quite late, I'll be honest with you. Um, and I, by the time I get out of bed, I'm already feeling bad about being sluggish and indolent. So I like to sort of roll out of bed and straight into something wholesome and you know, sort of <laughs> apologize every right day for, for uh, getting out so late. So I've got this exact um, uh, model together with my Bible and, you know, prayer books and things like that on my bedside table, which I've cleared for the purpose. Mm -hmm. Nice tablecloth and, and, and whatnot. Now, would you call which... yours a shrine? Well, I've got a separate one of those. Oh, okay. oh <laughs> so, you've got areas. Uh, yeah, yeah, I, 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 so I need all the help I can get, you see. So I've, got, <laughs> I've, got, I've practically got a zone in every room. <laughs> but, I, but, but next to the bed, the first thing to wake up to, it's Mary that I go to when I first wake up. She's the one that I feel, you know, like it, she's the one I want to start my day with. That's wonderful. And as a woman, you must have a, a, a relationship with her too that I goes, do. goes deeply. I do. And, um, you know, when, when I fixate on Mary, I can see her smiling at me. Mm -hmm. when, when I really get that uh, long gaze in, at her and and I, I can just see, I can feel her, you know. Mm -hmm. it, it, uh, and then, you know, you can take it to your priest and get it blessed and... Um, it's just a wonderful thing. It's nice when when you are able to do that. You get a sort of cumulative effect, you know, of the, the all, all your all your precious items blessed by the priest. You've got you, you can sort of feel the charge. Yes. Right. Yes. Well, she's lovely. Um, why don't we turn our attention to the next item okay. that we're going to talk about today? And uh, you could tell us what it is. Uh, and okay. it's, it's sitting right here. Okay, so this necklace that we're about to move into um, talking about is their oval miraculous metal. Um, it's called Art Deco <laughs> for the style. Um, it's it's quite beautiful. It's got um, two different uh, finishes of the. Uh, are we calling this? Pewter? I'm not quite sure. It's what they're it's calling it. it's, it's difficult. To, it's it's, it's solid, a solid. It's a solid sterling. sterling. Okay, it's solid sterling, but it's got, I don't know if you can see that on the camera, but there's shiny and there's matte. And, and putting the two together just makes this, um, the depth and the, um, I'm trying to think of the right word here. It's, dim it's the is dimension. It is it dimension? It's dimensional. So, um, and it is actually raised. I don't know if you guys can see that on the camera. We've got one here in a box that I'll try to just mm -hmm. show. I th if it, maybe you can catch the light uh, just glistening on those sections of very highly polished sterling silver. Mm -hmm. uh, the chain also helps because the chain there kind of picks out the shiny elements. And this is another one of those things that has dimension in the fabric, although it's a more stylized. You know, I, maybe maybe you've had a watch like that by one of those uh, French designers, like Erte. You know, those very elegant um, flowing lines of Art Deco. Mm -hmm. This is, um, I would say, perfect for a lady. Uh, right. It's it's also quite substantial, isn't it? I mean, if you if you if you pick it up. Well, it it says in the description, it's been highlighted by hand engraving to display the beautiful sheen of pure sterling. Yes. So um, it's quite nice. And then on the back, the reverse side, the metal portrays the M with the cross on the top. In the sacred hearts underneath, surrounded by the twelve stars. 
Yes, you should be able to see that there. And it's also got the mark there showing that it is solid sterling silver. Yes. Uh, now, silver is, I'm, I'm a yellow gold person. But increasingly these days, people are preferring silver colors, aren't they? Right. I noticed in the shop, you, you typically stock mostly those silver, those silver tones. That is popular. How would you advise people to shop, you know, based on coloring and age and things like that? Do you, who, who should be guided towards the silver? I think anyone can go with silver. I think Suits silver anyone, is it? so neutral. Yeah. I think it's, it. the thing about silver is it picks up and kind of marries into the color you're wearing. So it's more of a neutral, I feel, mm. than the gold. Um, gold doesn't suit everybody, does it? it? If you've got a darker skin tone, it can sometimes look almost almost a bit cheap. It looks a little bit too plasticky, sometimes yellow unless, gold. Unless you have very, very high quality gold. Right, right, right. But even, <laughs> but you see, even, even you know, with, with, it can sometimes, because gold gets a bit more yellowy, the higher quality because you know like a 10 carat is a bit of a muted color isn't it almost champagne gold right the very yellow golds at the high qualities can cannot they don't always suit everybody now when you say champagne gold is that different than rose gold well rose gold's a bit different rose gold's okay. got some color mixed into it i think we have nothing in rose gold <laughs> we're just chatting <laughs> well rose gold's a very difficult thing to match with anyone i i, I mean I, I i i personally love the silver on just about everyone i do too and this male female I, I really think, um, and this is a this is a lovely example. Now it's it's this is eighty nine dollars right. because it is solid sterling silver, right? Um, which is w uh, why you get that lovely weight of it, and this these beautiful polished areas where I don't know what they've done. They sort of buffed out something, but it's got as you say real dimension and depth to the to the way mm -hmm. that her mm -hmm. robes and clothes are are, are mentioned. It's wonderful. It's lovely. Um, it's as, in a gift box. Um, as far as gifts go, mm -hmm. these are both very beautiful. Oh, yeah. um, for uh, can, do you have to give gifts? Uh, are you sort of Mary related gifts to women, or, or can you really give them to everyone? Oh, everyone, absolutely everyone. I think I think men are just as devoted, if not more, to Mary. There's a sort of um, there's a there's a, there's a sometimes a bit of a supposition, maybe a misconception that for male Catholics, they should steer themselves towards certain kinds of devotions and so sort of, you know, Archangel Michael is for the dudes and the Rosary and Mary are for ladies. And, and you find actually that, that that doesn't really hold at all for, for, for people, especially when you're giving gifts. People are often very delighted to receive anything. Well, you think about it. I, I know a lot of men who um, are so devoted to the Rosary. And if mm -hmm. you're devoted to the Rosary, you're devoted to Mary. Right. Do you agree? Absolutely, and particularly somewhere like this, a church militant. You know, this is a this is right. quite a male heavy company. It is. Uh, the apostolate has lots of lots of people um, over there in the studio in our other building, um, most of whom are, are boys, but they're all they've all got they've all got the rosary on their desk. They do. I'm sure they we'll do. have a rosary special sometime. You're gonna have to <laughs> It'll pick be a, fun. A, a difficult to choose rosaries. Oh, it is because of that. You either you either get those. Dis I don't want to say disposable, but I want, you know, the ones that you sort of buy knowing they're not going to last forever. Right. And then you've got the, what, come across like fine jewelry. Right. And you don't, it's difficult to find that mid price point. I know that you've been well, searching Well, I think for it's, yeah, I've been searching for one for the store for the longest time. Um, I'll take suggestions. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can always write into us here at the show, <laughs> write it my, uh, to uh, Milo at churchmilton.com and uh, we'll both end up seeing it. Let's um, turn to our last, art last okay. item today, which is a book. And we like to give a sort of range of products here. Right. I thought while you're refreshing your memory mm -hmm. with our, our what, 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 what miraculous, talk about miraculous. Look at our production team. Look at this level of spit and polish. What a good job they've done here. <laughs> they did. Um, I'm going to read from this book. Um, in a minute, but before that, give give just give us a, uh, give the, the viewers a, a, an idea of what it is. It's called a year with Mary, but what does that mean? What do you get? From the well, book? this is the deep dive. Okay, this is when you want to get serious about your devotion, and um, I've done some consecrations, um, but this is, is spending a whole year with Mary. So each and every day, you can look up a passage, and um, go through your day. Like this would be excellent for you, Milo. If you have this next to your bed, yeah. you wake up and have this um, married, <laughs> no pun intended, with this, yes. you know, you gaze at her and then you open up your book to the day and start your day that way. I think it'd be excellent. 
And by the way, we should probably mention that if you're looking at this on the screen during this program, and it may change from time to time, depending on when you're watching, we do have offers on. So keep an eye on the words on the screen because they won't only give you the price of the items that we're talking about and where you should go to buy them, but occasionally we will have specials. For instance, this is a Mary, this is a Mary special today, and we will from time to time have offers, for instance, you know, ten dollars off if you you know if you if, like you, feel, a bundle price. if you feel like picking up all three. So keep an eye on the screen because depending on when you watch this, the offers may change. Um, and the latest thing will always be on the screen. I thought I'd read just one of these. And, and well, it's let's, not... let's tell the author's name. Too. Yes, his okay. name is Paul Thigpen, and he's responsible, isn't he, for those spiritual warfare manuals? Yes. At least one yes, of them. Yes, he is. Possibly Absolutely. Uh, and I've got the, I've got the, the um, manual for spiritual warfare. Right. I've got the manual for Eucharistic adoration, I think mm -hmm. it's called, uh, the title Carol, is. Carol, yes. And there's a Marian one, too. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Although what we've chosen today is a larger book with more in it. Um, and, and one more thing about this book, A Year uh, with Mary, is we have um, A Year with the Fathers, A Year with the Church, um, um, A Year with the Bible. So th this is um, not the only one that we have devotion for a year to um, something in the Catholic Church. And it's the subtitle is Daily Meditations on the Mother of God. And what that means is it's not just scripture, but it's also prayers and writings, poems, all kinds of thoughts and literature, really, mm -hmm. um, from a variety of different thinkers, including many saints, on the subject of Mary. So it's not, you know, some people love reading their Bible. They do the Bible in a year thing. Some people love reading scripture. Other people, you know, are a little bit more apprehensive about diving into bits of the Bible blind because they think, oh, well, you know, I'm just, I'm just not sure what I'm going to get out of it because some of it's, you know, there's a lot of historical names. Or so. This is um, selected to be endlessly fascinating. You know, every day it's a completely different tone and style and author. There's lots from St. Alphonsus Liguori, but there's also, you know, uh, Louis de Montfort, Pope Benedict the Sixteenth all kinds of different meditations and thoughts on Mary. Mm -hmm. So I thought I'd read one from a fellow Brit, uh, the blessed John Henry Newman, since okay. British writing always sounds better. I always voice, love to it? hear you read. Well, thanks. Um, so I'll, I'll just read you, this is day 155. So that they're, the good thing about this is they're numbered so you can start it at any time. You know, mm -hmm. you don't have to wait until January to start your year with her. You can just, you can keep track yourself, maybe just use a pencil to check them off or something. Um, so it's called Mary Vessel of Devotion. And in this, the blessed John Henry Newman um, illustrates the meaning of devotion and shows how Our Lady overflowed with devotion to her son. To be devout is to be devoted. We know what is meant by a devoted wife or daughter. It's one whose thoughts center in the person so deeply loved, so tenderly cherished. She follows him about with her eyes. She's ever seeking some means of serving him. And if her services are very small in their character, that only shows how intimate they are and how unceasing. And especially if the object of her love be weak or in pain or near to die, still more intensely does she live in his life and know nothing but him. This intense devotion towards our Lord, forgetting self in love for him, is displayed in St. Paul who says, I know nothing but Jesus Christ and him crucified. But as great as was St. Paul's devotion to our Lord, much greater was that of the Blessed Virgin because she was his mother, and because she had him and all his sufferings actually before her eyes, and because she had the long intimacy of 30 years with him, and because she was, from her special sanctity, so unspeakably near to him in spirit. When, then, he was mocked, bruised, scourged, and nailed to the cross, she felt as keenly as if every indignity and torture inflicted on him was struck at herself. She could have cried out in agony at every pang of his, this is called her compassion, or her suffering with her son. And it arose from this that she was the vessel of devotion, unlike any other. And you have, in, as well as these passages, um, a question each day so that you can consider what Mary means to you, your relationship to her, and then uh, a small closing prayer as well. Wonderful. Which is lovely. So we'll um, we'll pop this back up here so you can look at it at home. This, by the way, is one of those, it's called an ultra soft cover. Correct. Um, tell us a bit about that. Well, it's, it's kind of like just below leather, but it's very nice and it feels so nice in the hands. It's very pliable. It just feels comfortable. 
Mm-hmm. Do you agree? Yeah. One of the things that's nice about this is, you know, people with books, they cherish like this, and especially because we've all got such busy lives. You have to rush out the house, you know. Um, sometimes you've got a book and you need to stuff it in your bag. Mm-hmm. And when you have a leather with the hard covers and things, it, you, you're always worried about getting the, the edges dog-eared or bending the cover or something. The wonderful thing about this, I mean, within limits, obviously. The wonderful thing about this is if it is in your handbag and it sort of, you know, is, is around a, you know, I don't know, a thermos or something, it pops straight back. Right. And it was really durable and it looks as good at the end of the year as it did at the beginning. And so once you retire it for a little bit and then perhaps after a year want to come back and do it again, right. it looks like you just got it. Um, it really does hold up beautifully. And the paper in this is nice too. They've it got is. They've got lovely, it's sort of a cream it's... with darker cream decorations. The font is beautiful. High gloss. Yeah, mm-hmm. high gloss paper. So it looks like you're reading something of really high quality. Yeah, it's lovely. Yep, so that very, very one, nice. if you're interested in A Year with Mary by Paul Thickman, that's forty four ninety five. Um and, and like as as we say, it's a very it's a very durable book. It's even got it's even got stitching down the front. So it's made it's almost and made the like edges a handbag, are all isn't it? gold. Um Oh yeah, I forgot about mm-hmm. that. We're so used to seeing that, aren't we, from Bibles that we forget. It's actually quite a, quite, it's quite a special and expensive thing to have on a book is this lovely uh, gilt binding. We get spoiled, don't we, Catholics? Because we, we, put, we put gold on everything. We do. <laughs> but it, it, is, it is a beautiful thing. Um, pop it back up there so you can see it. And that's 44.95, uh, 400 pages, and um, you can see the size of that. Well, this has been, this has been lovely. I think we're going to do more. It's been nice. I think we're going to do more of these. I hope so. It's a lot of fun. If you could recommend just one of these products uh, for people at home who mm-hmm. maybe would like to eke out their spending a little bit uh, over over time or who are trying to choose for themselves, is there one thing that you would say would bring you closer to Mary, something that you would find especially precious? I'd have to go with the one I have, which is, which is the Adoring Mary statue. I think so too. Um, she just... Uh, it almost looks like it's real clothing. I don't know how to describe it to you. I, I hope the camera's really coming in on this because it's just... I, is the word fluid, Milo, that I yeah, want to say? Yeah. It's, 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 sometimes you'll go into one of those museums, you know, the Louvre or the British Museum, whatever, and you'll see some neoclassical statue by Rodin or something, and you will not believe that it isn't fabric. That it isn't fabric like draped over, you know, some mm-hmm. nubile limb or something, you know. Right, right, right. But this, it's got, mm-hmm. it's got that feel to it where you, you almost do a double take sometimes. Just like, how did they render this in this <laughs> solid material? And and the thing I come, I know you love the stars on I the do. on, I do. on the show. Yep. The thing that I keep coming back to is just this wonderful face, which is is it, it. You're lucky to get just the perfect face sometimes with Mary because. Even with you know very very expensive statuary and iconography and all, all the rest of it, sometimes they you know <laughs> they don't quite it's right. a bit that's difficult, but they've nailed it with this. Right, and and Mary, the Blessed Mother of God, she's so important to us, especially being Catholic, and I, I just think that um, she's like right there. She's to be honored and treasured and what she what she went through in the suffering she felt of her son it can't be compared you you i mean what he went through is unbelievable but what she suffered through watching that every mother that has children just when you really get to the depths of what that would be like Mm -hmm. and even people that even men i mean it's just um, astounding what she went through, and um, it's it's a big part of our faith. Yes. That's All been... of this is enriching for us, I think, and um, a good salute to Mary. I think I'm with you on the uh, statue being the right choice. <laughs> well, thank you, Deborah. Um, we will be back 